नहीं अभी मैं क्या करूं ओके ओके मे बी शी इज बिजी तो मैं रिकॉर्डिंग चेक कर लेंगे शायद या अगर आपके पास कुछ है तो मैं कॉल कर देता हूं ठीक है एक बार बेटर शी कैन जॉइन ना लाइव सेशन लेने का बात ही अलग होता है इंटरेक्शन भी होता है हां ऐसे तो मेरे पास ढेरो वीडियोस है देने के लिए बट लाइव सेशन की बात अलग है ना ट्रू ट्रू हम्म अगर आउट ऑफ सेशन है नहीं अवेलेबल है तो बात अलग है अभी तो ले रहे हैं ना सो so, कभी ऐसा आउट ऑफ स्टेशन या फिर छुट्टी वुट्टी पे रहो तो प्रॉब्लम नहीं होगी ना इन द सेंस आई मीन आई मे नवंबर में शायद मेरे कुछ प्लान्स रहेंगे आउट ऑफ स्टेशन का एक सेकंड सुन एक सेकंड मैडम लाइक क्लासेस स्टार्टेड प्लीज जॉइन ना या ओके या या हां तो जब आप छुट्टी पे रहे तो आपको वीडियोस दे देता हूं ओके okay. क्योंकि मतलब टाइम तो हमारा सेव हो रहा ना हम्म hmm, हम्म hmm. अब जैसे छुट्टी पे है जैसे वन वीक जैसे मैं छुट्टी पे रहूं तो मैं होटल में भी स्टे करता हूं आई आई मेक श्योर आई टेक द क्लास अगर okay. बहुत ही अनअवॉर्डेबल है एक आध दो दिन एक अब जैसे कोई वेडिंग है जिस दिन बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं हो रहा तो एक बात अलग है उसका कुछ नहीं छुट्टी ले सकते हैं बट एक दो दिन का ठीक है 10 10 15 15 दिन बोले तो इट विल बी लाइक यू नो 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 इट विल बी फॉर 3 और 4 डेज टू बी वेरी प्रोफेशनल एंड आई अंडरस्टैंड यू आल्सो आर लाइक वर्किंग सो वैसा नहीं होगा मुझे भी पता है तो एक दो तीन दिन इज नॉट अ प्रॉब्लम उसका क्या इशू है चलता वो मैनेज कर सकते चलिए लेट्स स्टार्ट दी मार्केट रेशियोस दिस इज अ डिफरेंट सेट ओके सो इन मार्केट रेशियोस वी हैव बुक वैल्यू पर शेयर सो जनरली व्हेन यू सी अ बैलेंस शीट दिस इज अ बैलेंस शीट एंड यू हैव लाइक टोटल ऑफ एसेट्स एस लेट्स से टेन लैक्स एंड यू आर ईट एंड योर टोटल ऑफ लाइबिलिटी इज ऑल्सो टेन लैक्स दैट इज अंडरस्टूड फैक्ट ओके नाउ Uh, from this total of assets if i remove the liabilities part if i remove the liabilities part okay mm. so like liabilities part is like say 6 lakhs so what is the equity part 4 lakhs Four. isn't it so yeah so this is debt part this is equity part so total of assets minus uh, liability gives me equity so i get the value of equity and that is 4 lakh and i have issued 10000 shares to public So now I will just divide. I'll just cancel this four zeros, and I am getting per share value is how much? Forty. This is when I have issued the shares. I am speaking about that year. Okay. In the coming years, the value of share may change because the value of share may change in such a way like you know the share values. The share takes what actually people's perception. all the people's perception about the company and all are taken are are factored in the share price okay the market price depends upon people's perception about the company and what people are ready to pay for that share if i have a 40 dollar share i can sell it for 100 dollars also to someone mm -hmm. because that guy is ready to pay 100 dollars for my stock why because my stock has that demand in the market okay there are various reasons the perceptions are built but as of now we are discussing about book value per share so this is the formula for book value okay this is the concept of book value now we will see the formula for book value i hope you understood this one correct yeah yeah so now coming to the concept as what i explained you here the same thing comes into picture but here see i took like just equity i like where in my assumption was there is no preferred equity okay but let's say equity we will divide it into two parts one is common equity and one is preferred equity let's say i divide this into two parts common equity and preferred equity okay so like then again i don't i have to remove this preferred equity from the uh, total shareholders equity so total shareholders equity is 4 lakhs and preferred equity is 2 lakhs and then i am left over with 2 lakhs and then divided by 10000 so what i get 20 dollars is my share value that's right or wrong yeah yeah okay this is like Two, it's like okay, two lakhs. Yeah. So the same thing they have mentioned here. They have also given the same thing, same version. Total shareholders equity is preferred equity plus common equity. Okay. 
from that i am removing pre preferred equity why because i only want the common equities value okay and then so, so in my example 4 lakhs was the total equity 2 lakhs is the preferred equity and outstanding shares are let's say 10000 so how much is the value of per share 20 dollars correct hmm that is the book value of a share that is the value i show in the balance sheet i can show you some some like balance sheets like uh, let's say okay i'll show you in one another, another book how the book value looks like or seems like just to say i'm taking the class and this washing machine guy has come oh no what like i called him at 230 he unexpectedly dropped in right now no one else is around at home there are many people but like uh, mom and wife but you know at times like some things i need to speak you have to be available yeah uh, like uh, they spoke to me and for like stand and all our old machine like uh, is like not working right now so what a new one okay <clears throat> so for that today like i told him to come i mean holiday so i gave him specific specific time 2:30 or after that any time but i don't know these guys are like you know अनप्रेडिक्टेबलिकुलर <laughs> Face value. Face value. That means the value at which you issued the stock. So you can see here, fifty <clears throat> cents ordinary shares, or like they say, one lakh shares have been issued at the rate of ten dollars each. So this is the issue price or the price at which the the stock was issued. This is also called as face value. So here you can see fifty cent as the face value or book value. Okay. Okay. So you got this idea in the balance sheet. Correct. Right. Now I'm moving forward. So with this, you can also find out number of shares. See, if at all this is four lakh fifty thousand divided by zero point five zero. Now you can find out the number of shares, outstanding shares also. Okay. Correct. You can find out the outstanding. So now we are taking four lakh fifty thousand as a total. This is the total value of the shares, and this is the mm -hmm. per share value. Okay. So you just find out the outstanding shares, Suman. Nine lakhs. Yeah, nine lakhs. Yeah, just a second. Yeah. Total value by face value, book value, sir. Then we can. So, yes, I I think that is the fifty cents, right? Number of common okay. share. Yes. Yeah. Sir, can you please unmute, sir? Okay. So this is fine. So now let's move forward. So we we have taken four lakh fifty thousand. That is the total shareholder uh, uh, dollar upon this fifty cents. That is the book value. Uh, this book value, Face right? Value. Yes. Face yes. value. Yeah. Yeah. That gives you the outstanding stock, like nine nine hundred thousand, not dollars, number of stocks. Okay. Okay. So like very easily understood, nine hundred thousand. If you multiply with fifty cent, fifty. What do you get? You get four lakh fifty. That's it. Oh. Now. Now, now let's go ahead. That was book value per share. I hope you have got the concept. Now we are doing market to book ratio. See, this is a very good ratio to understand the company's performance or investors. Uh, like uh, uh, like whether the investors who are holding the stock is worth it or not okay so investors want to know the growth in their stock isn't it so <clears throat> suppose let's say i have just bought a stock for 100 dollars this is kotak mahindra bank stock i bought it for 100 dollars 
and the stock has uh, rose to like eight hundred dollars. Uh, sorry, Kotak Mahindra Bank is an Indian company. <laughs> it doesn't like mm. dollars on the currency, but I'm just taking an example. So what are you seeing here? You're seeing that your stock has gone eight times of your investment what you have done. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. Is it so? Yeah. So you know if the stock is like you bought for hundred dollars and still five years it is hundred dollars, then what is your uh, what what do you uh, interpret conclude waste? It is not worth it. If it mm. grows, then it is worth it. So definitely, if it is one th more than one, here the ratio would be what? One. One. Yeah. The ratio should be more than one. The ratio should be more than one for you to be satisfied with this. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Can you just wait for it for a second? Like I'll be in second. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Suma, yeah. What the uh, rate is trading in the market? That is the market rate, no? Is it right? So, it if, for example, extra? I have bought the shares for hundred rupees, mm -hmm. and after uh, six to seven, after a year, it has increased eight hundred. So that is the market uh, value of the share. Current stock price per share. So yes. that has been Our increased by eight. What amount is the increase? That is the market value. Or yeah. Uh, oh, I can't understand. Please uh, again explain. So eight times here, sir has uh, told hundred hmm. rupees stock has increased to eight hundred. So now hmm. it has grown eight times. So current stock per share, how yeah. much it has raised? Eight times. Eight times. Okay. Yeah. So uh, that's what he was trying to make us understand. Till there, even I got it. Then book value. So I believe I uh, book value per share. Mm -hmm. With the example, we will able to get it. Okay, okay. Uh, I will. Uh, I joined late, so I am asking you. Yeah, this so he started when you joined. This is market yeah. book ratio. Uh -huh, that book value. Uh, I think there is an example also four lakh fifty thousand. Yeah, he has taken that as an example. Yeah, book yeah. value for sure. We can ask him to repeat. Okay. Market to book ratio is also called priced. The company current. Okay. So this 800 divided by 100 will give us the market to book ratio. So 800 is our current stock per price and book value per share is 100. So that means we have uh, we have purchased a stock in 100 that was book value per share and now the price is 800, right? Yeah. And that divided will give us the market to book ratio. What that what amount we have mentioned in the balance sheet that is that is book value. Is it right? There is a difference between the book value and market value. Right. Also. Right, right.
Okay, so shall we begin? Hello. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what did you infer? There should be some growth at least. Otherwise, the share is not a worth buy, isn't it so? A worthy investment. Now, now comes the main concept of EPS. So it's like you know, EPS is nothing but IAC by Van So. That is Van So. IAC by Van So is nothing but income available to common shareholders divided by weighted average number of common shares outstanding. So I will give you a simple version of EPS. Then I'll go for the with the textbook version. OK, let me explain you simply what is EPS. Let's say there is a company which has 10 shareholders. Mm -hmm. That means how many shares are outstanding? 10 shares. Let's say it's like, you know, uh, like these are, this is a company. It's a private company. So outstanding shares would not be there. Those will be held with the uh, company's directors or proprietors or whatever. Okay. Owners. They are the owners. So now this company has earned a hundred dollar profit. Now, what is the profit here? Like, let's say it's not hundred dollars, one twenty dollars. So I take one twenty dollars, and from that I remove the preferred stock dividends, twenty dollars divided by outstanding shares ten. What is the meaning of EPS earning per share? So whatever earnings have happened in the company, each shareholder is getting how much of that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's a very simply understood fact. So if we get so the, like these are like 10 shareholders are there one shareholder like 10 shares like 10 shares are there. Let's say 10 shares are outstanding. There are two people who have invested. One has six shares. One has four shares. Mm -hmm. So now we find the earning per share and then we can say how much. These two guys have earned. OK, so for that hundred dollars divided by 10. So what is the EPS earning per share? Ten dollar. Correct. So the guy who has six shares will get $60. The guy who has four shares will get 40. 40. Mm. Yeah. So this is EPS. So what I did is I have taken net income minus preference dividends divided by outstanding shares. This is a simple formula. When you Google out, when you go, when you go like Google this EPS, you get the same version. But our textbook is considering like uh, our textbook. Current is going deeper into this so we'll understand what what is their version so write down the formula iac by vans vang so weighted average number of common shares outstanding will you write down the formula we'll we'll discuss Okay. Yes, sir. Next. So now first we'll understand what is income available to common shareholders and how to find out find out this one. So first you know when you make an income statement you get net income and you know how you get net income isn't it so we have already discussed while doing the uh, like uh, profitability ratios correct I have explained the income statement to you am I right? Mm -hmm. yes, so when you get net income from that you have you will transfer that net income to retained earnings account fine from that you will be removing you will be like deducting the dividends so there are two types of preference because we are finding out income available to common shareholders so whatever the common shareholders have to get they have to get at last that means after meeting all the obligations after paying interest to debt holders 
after paying tax to government after paying preferred dividends to preference shareholders the leftover fund, the leftover income belongs to whom it belongs to shareholders common shareholders equity shareholders okay so like so that net income we have from that we are removing the non cumulative preference dividends so there are the preference shares are of many types there are very various types of preference shares like if i go depth in depth there are many like redeemable irredeemable then like comes like uh, convertible non convertible then comes cumulative non cumulative so we are so there are many preference shares but here we are speaking about these two okay see from net income you have to remove non cumulative preferred dividends and cumulative preferred dividends both because both are both these two are different different kind of preference shares and dividends have to be given to both the shareholders and our agenda is to remove the preferred dividends definitely wholly okay whatever kind of preferred dividends are there we have to remove it whether whether the preferred dividends are of non cumulative uh, nature or of cumulative nature or whether it is like non cumulative preferred dividends or cumulative preferred dividends we have to remove it but there are two things you have to remember non cumulative preferred dividends are those to which if dividend is not paid this year next year it will not be paid what did i say mm -hmm. Next if the dividends are not paid. paid this year next year it will not be paid cumulative preferred dividends are those dividends for which dividend paid this year or not doesn't matter next year it will be paid understood okay. that's the reason why the name is cumulative it will accumulate the dividends will accumulate okay. Okay. so for cumulative preferred dividends if dividends are paid this year it doesn't matter it will next year it has to be paid for non cumulative preferred dividends the dividends are like not paid this year it will not be paid the next year okay okay for non cumulative if the dividends are not paid this year next year it will not be paid for cumulative if it is not paid this year next year it will be paid these are the two points you have to remember non cumulative dividends so paid last year and we said two amounts we can pay are either only one year amount we can pay Madam, I, i'll just completely explain this then you ask me dividends okay. not paid this year will not be paid that means it has to be paid in this year only cumulative dividends can be paid next year if not paid this year now so what happens is company first declares the dividend and when company declares the dividend that means they will pay definitely they are confirmed that they'll pay if they declare it they'll pay it okay so here if they have declared in case of non cumulative preferred dividends if if dividends are declared you have to deduct whether paid or not did you understand what i am saying hmm that, see whether paid or not in the sense it will be paid of course why will company declare then if company is declaring that means they know that they'll be paying that okay okay mm -hmm. so irrespective of paid or not it doesn't matter if it is we declared have you have to deduct okay. cumulative if they declare or not it doesn't matter definitely it will be paid in the future so that is understood that it will be earned so that mm. you have to deduct okay 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 so non cumulative preferred dividends if declared you have to deduct and cumulative preferred dividends it is presumed that it will be earned whether declared or not it has to be deducted mm. then you get income available to common shareholders okay just okay. make a note of this and how can we identify which is non cumulative and which is cumulative that data will be given in the question okay data will be given data will be given I'll give a question right now regarding this.
ओके so now we have done the we have just uh, like discussed about iac now we will discuss about vansco okay weighted average number of common shares outstanding so this is what you know this is time weighted in the sense what happens if company has issued shares on january 1st okay one uh, like 1 lakh shares so this is outstanding for how many months this is outstanding for how many months till december 31st Hmm. This is outstanding for how many months? I'm asking. Eleven, twelve. Twelve months, of course. Twelve months. Jan first, December thirty first is like twelve months. So hmm. we will uh, like it is outstanding for one entire year, correct? Hmm. Or we can say twelve by twelve. Twelve by twelve is also one. Now, June first, we have issued fifty thousand shares. This is outstanding for how many Six years? Six months. Six. Six half of it. Okay, so six mm -hmm. by twelve. So we, why why are we finding out this weighted average number of common shares uh, outstanding? See, all shares would not be issued on day one. Some shares would be issued on day one. Some shares would be issued mid of the year. Some shares would be issued quarterly. Some issued some will be issued last quarter of the year. So we have to see. till what time they are outstanding and based upon that we have to divide the earnings amongst them okay do you think the shares which are outstanding for just 3 months okay sure like see some shares are outstanding from the beginning of the year some shares are outstanding from the like only only like 3 months of the year that means october first they have issued the share so october november december only 3 months they are outstanding so do you think the earnings have to be distributed amongst the shareholders uh, like uh, like directly or on weighted average basis on time weighted average basis what is justified time of course from when they are outstanding they should get the earnings am i right yeah. that is prudent that is that is like common sense prevails there it's mm. wise to distribute the earnings amongst the shareholders based upon their outstanding based upon from when they are outstanding isn't it so yeah that's what okay that's like i'm able to convince you about this now i want you to just calculate this one come on go for this what are they saying in the sense see company q began the year with 100000 common share common outstanding 10000 shares were okay. issued on july 1st mm. okay this is like uh, the, the beginning of the year they had this many shares and this many shares were issued on july 1st so july to december is like 6 months correct 6 months so 100 100000 shares are outstanding from the beginning of the year 10000 shares are outstanding for half of the year is it so yeah and, uh, like uh, the weighted average number of common shares outstanding for the newly issued shares was 5000 of course because these are outstanding for half year so 5000 shares it will be mm. coming and uh, so what we can conclude 100 100000 shares are outstanding from the beginning 5000 out uh, shares are outstanding for 6 months isn't it so yeah hmm and what they did is the company reacquired 1000 of its shares on october 1st since we are finding vansco weighted average number of common shares outstanding we only want outstanding shares we don't want the non outstanding shares correct right we want outstanding or non outstanding we want outstanding outstanding okay. when company reacquires shares that means uh, those shares would not be outstanding now correct if right i i 
what happens is the the shares which i have issued to public i can reacquire them if i want to privatize my company i don't want my company to be a public company anymore mm -hmm. you know alliance group and all these big big uh, families they do that this when they get surplus money they start reacquiring the stocks okay okay so this company is also reacquiring the stocks and uh, like 1000 shares they re reacquired the company reacquired 1000 of its shares on october 1st so what we will see is these 1000 shares are outstanding for how much time it is outstanding for 9 months no yes yeah see these 1000 shares are a part of this 100000 and 5000 shares correct right Out of right he has taken 1000 shares he acquired Mm. Yeah, so these are outstanding for nine months, but these are not outstanding for how many months? Three. Remaining months. Three months. So two, remaining. Yeah, two fifty. So, the, so I will remove that which is not outstanding. So I will get only the outstanding ones. Okay. Okay. Just do this question. Should be sure in July first. Yeah. Shall we move forward then? If you have done this, so here the concept, understanding the concept, it is important, no? For Vansko, calculation, yes. to yahan pe easily dikha diya hai. It was. Uh, yeah. hmm. Yes, understanding the concept is the key. Minutes. Finished. Just two minutes. Yeah, yeah, you can. And what about this thousand into nine by twelve? What that will give us? Sorry. Uh, nine by twelve, the nine months that has been it taken, was, right? It, it was outstanding. Yeah, yeah. It is outstanding for nine months. What we want is how much time it is not outstanding. Right. Okay. That is three by twelve. How much time it was not outstanding? Yes. Yes. Okay, all right. Now you should understand some concepts which I'm which I'm saying. Okay. So. See, there will be some uh, like uh, details, more details. Like, see, there may be some events which may happen during the year. Like, stock dividend and stock split. What do you mean by stock dividend? 
stock dividends are nothing but these are the dividends which are issued by company to stockholders okay uh like uh, in the sense company doesn't want to give cash dividends to them instead of giving cash dividends company is giving what stock stock dividends to them okay so by the means company wants to have more cash with them so that they can utilize this cash for some purchase or expansion of the business or like uh, for starting a new company or branch or something anything you can take into picture and stock split is nothing but the company's stocks are not marketable now like it its stock has gone to 100 dollars it's a big amount you know 100 dollars is what if you buy a mobile phone like for something some 7000 or 8000 rupees it's like equal to 100 dollars is 8000 a small amount no so 100 dollars by me, any means is not a small amount so if the stock has gone to 100 dollars it is like right now in such a condition whereby it is not that marketable people are not ready to buy so what company does is they go for a split so what they do is one stock of 100 dollars they split into 10 stocks of 10 dollars does it make any change no 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 it's still 100 dollars stock correct yeah yeah the capital is still the same so these two events can occur like in between the year or in the mid of the year okay but what you need to do is there are three methods of finding out van scope taking into consideration all these events but i will not make you to understand all the three methods i don't want you to get confused i want to explain you only one method for which what i am saying you have to understand you have to give what you know a retrospective effect for this what do you mean by retrospective effect a retrospective effect means these two which is happening in between the year or mid of the year are are happening at the beginning of the year as if they happen like you have to show them in such a way so i am explaining you what is retrospective effect you have to show them in such a way as if these two did not happen in between the year but they happen at the beginning of the year did you understand what i'm saying okay yeah that is what is called retrospective effect that means the stock split and stock dividend has not happened in between the year it has happened at beginning of the year okay like that you have to show so retrospective effect stock split and stock dividend has happened at the beginning of the year beginning of the year we okay. need to assume in such a way yeah yeah that's what that is what is called as retrospective effect okay so now we will solve a question based upon this so you just take this i will just be in, coming in a second i'm just having some water just a second yeah Okay. Day twice. Okay. Are you reading this? Yeah, I'm. Uh, we are reading it. Trying to oh. understand. Matthew Corporation has these many shares outstanding, and the par value is ten dollars. They are outstanding on Jan first, Jan first, two thousand ten. During two thousand ten, following share transactions take place. 
uh, what what has happened is some like in the month of april on april 1st 10000 shares were issued at 50 each august 1 company has repurchased 24000 shares okay okay then october 1st matthew carries 2 for 1 stock split that means 2 for 1 that means every one share has been split into two, two shares okay okay yeah. and uh, november 1 15000 shares are issued for 55 dollars each december 15 matthew declares 10% stock dividend okay so these are the conditions now let's start calculating the van score first we will take outstanding we will take this 1 lakh outstanding shares which is outstanding for how many months 12 months. 12 months. 12 months. So 12 months out of 12 months, correct? Okay. So 1 lakh and uh, 1 lakh, like 12 by 12, 1 lakh. But one thing you should understand, there are two things happening. There is a stock split of 2 for 1. That means every 1 share has been split into 2. So like every 1 share has been split into 2 in the sense 1 lakh shares will be split into how many shares? 2 lakh shares, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah. Every one share is split into two shares. So one lakh will be split into two lakhs. Correct or wrong? Yes. Fine. Right. Every one share into two. So one lakh into two lakhs. So that's the reason why I'm multiplying two here. Correct? Okay. So you, we are multiplying since the beginning two only. Yeah, we are giving retrospective effect for that. Yes. Even yeah. though they happen at the end or between, we have to give mm. retrospective effect. Now... 10% is stock dividend. So on one stock, we are giving 10% additional. So it becomes 1 uh, plus 0 0.10. 10% of 1 is 0 0.10. So it, so it becomes 1.1. Correct? Yeah. See, 10% of 1 rupee is 10 paise. 10% mm. of 1 dollar is 10 cents. So it becomes 1.1 dollars or 1.1. Correct? Okay. See, okay. 10 paisa, if you add to 1 rupee, it becomes 1.1 rupees, na? Mm. Mm. So 1.1. So altogether it becomes 2,20,000, okay? Okay? So, okay. So 1 lakh into 12 by 12 is 1. So 1 lakh into 1 is 1 lakh into 2 for stock split and also this for stock dividend. Dividend. Point number two. Okay. So, like the company has issued 10,000 shares in the month of April. So, now if you take from April to December, how many months you see? April to December. Yeah. Nine months. Nine months, of course. Oh. So, this is outstanding for nine months. So, mm. 10,000 into 9 by 12 is 7,500 into again stock split and stock dividend so we get 16500 okay so you do this first two things then i'll go for the next yeah stock. let us do yeah. this thing uh, that's what i'm giving the point uh, so 10 thousand
done then? I'm just writing the bit explanation. So for rest of the year, uh, the splits and stock dividends remains the same, right? Yes. Rest of the things. Yes. Okay, done till here. Now, understand this one very clearly. Uh, very important to understand. See what happened is uh, on August first, Matthew repurchases twenty-four thousand shares to be held as treasury stock. So mm. treasury stock is nothing but stock buyback. What is that? Buyback. Buyback or reacquiring its own shares. Okay. Or stock okay. repurchase also we can say. So now see this, whatever the company is repurchasing is repurchasing out, out of the existing outstanding shares. Am I right? Additional. No, no, no. They are repurchasing from the already existing outstanding shares okay so these 24000 shares what they are re reacquiring were outstanding till what time they were outstanding till august 1st am i right yeah after that will they be outstanding no only for because 5 months so what we want we want outstanding shares so we will remove the time when they are not outstanding am i right all right that is what we discussed now mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So we should only find out the outstanding shares. We should remove the time when they are not outstanding or the we will find out that time average based number of shares which will not be outstanding for the rest of the five months. We will remove that from this category. So now right. 24,000 shares will not be outstanding for five months. September, October, November, December, uh, September, August, September, October, November, December. So five by 12. It becomes 10,000 and again we will give the treatment of stock split and stock dividend. Why? Because the stock split has happened after the stock repurchase and the stock dividend has also happened wow. after the stock repurchase. Okay. Right. So we will give the treatment to this. Next. November 1, 15,000 shares were issued for five, $55. So these shares will be outstanding for two months, November and December. Okay. And will you give stock split to this? No. no. Because these shares have been issued after stock split has happened. Okay. Hello. Yeah. So only stock only dividend stock will be dividend there. Should be applicable. Yes. So only stock dividend is applicable. We got this. Then what you need to do? Two lakh twenty thousand. Twenty two thousand. Two lakh twenty thousand plus this minus this plus this will give you one score. Please go for the rest of the thing. So repurchase one. We have to minus. Minus only for the time period which, uh, for which they are not outstanding. Can you please explain the number first 15,000 shares? This 15,000 shares are outstanding for how much time, madam? From November to December, two months, correct? Two months, yeah. This 15,000 shares have been issued after the stock split, but before the stock dividend. So stock split will not be applicable, but stock dividend would be applicable. That's it. What two thousand five hundred? Sorry, two thousand fifteen thousand into two divided by twelve. You have to do the time weighted, na? 
you have to do the time varied average madam got it so december okay so now finished ha huh, kind of wait uh can you just explain this 21750 after the deduction only we got right after taking all this like 2 lakh 20 plus 16500 you should mm. remove this 22000 which is not outstanding mm. okay and then 2750 you get 2 lakh 17250 yes i got mm, okay Correct. We can add twenty-two thousand. Not we can add. Well, that is subtraction, madam. This yeah, is bracket, na? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So in every problem, or uh, this repurchase, whenever it comes, so we have to deduct. Have to subtract for the time it is not outstanding. Okay. Ha. ठीक है. For the five months. Yeah, I am giving you some homework. Don't do this. This is already done. Method. I don't want you to follow these two methods. I am giving you some homework. Which you have to do at home today. Will you do? Yeah. So yes, sir. I'll try. Take this one. Or else, I'll if you take want, take the screenshot. No, if you want, we can do in the next class. Yeah, even that is fine. Yeah, yeah I will yeah, okay, try. Then, if we are then, able no, 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 to. Leave it, leave it, leave it. Leave it. We will do all the questions in the coming class. Okay. Then I will give you from Gleam. I will give you the homework. Correct. Okay. Okay. Fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so done. we will take the class day after tomorrow. Happy Dasra in advance. Yeah, happy Dasra to you too. Yeah, bye bye. But like the one thing is, you have to again go to this video and Suman, yeah. as you said, you will be practicing. You have to do that even. Okay. Yeah, I need to practice earlier sums as well. Yeah, so as you have got tomorrow's time, so you can capitalize on that. Okay. 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 Sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Yeah.